Hey everybody, I'm Grimbold Blackhammer and welcome you to The Slaughter, where I send my troops to slaughter my enemies and they somehow slaughter mine, such as to be my climb up the ladder of victory. I have a battle report for you to showcase the Dread Elves list I've been optimizing, and aptly I found a Highborn Elf player to test it against. Our deployment was Counter Thrust, and our objective, the small glass marker in the middle of the table, is to hold the center. Presumably we're fighting over that watering hole and who will be allowed to resupply their troops with it. At least I assume that's why we spent so much time in it. Let's go through the lists. Starting on my opponent's left flank, he has a unit of five Elian Reavers, and behind the building you can just see the tips of his wings is his Great Eagle. Next to that is a block of Lion Guard with my opponent's general. He's rocking the usual build. He's got a 2 plus, 4 plus with a great weapon, so he's very useful. He's hard to kill, he's fairly killy, and generally he's going to be a pain in my backside. He has two Sea Guard Reapers, and next to that is a block of 40 Sea Guard. In that block, he has his BSB, who has a only a 4-up save, but a 4-up ward, and a dirt cheap pyromancy wizard, who has two spells and the book. His right flank is being held down by a character on an eagle and a griffin. You'll have to forgive me, my opponent told me at the beginning of the game that uh, that model was not a griffin, it was just an eagle, and I thought it was just an eagle without a character, so I probably should have paid a little more attention to it during the early turns of the game. C'est la vie. Starting on my right flank, leading the charge, I have three Medusas. Now I know they're out of fashion, and if you ask most people, they say they stink, but I find them incredibly useful. I had to try them just because no one else liked them, and I was so impressed, I now use three. They can act as chaff, they're killy, they're hard to get rid of, but most importantly, they give me three more deployments to control where my battles are being fought. Behind that is my general, General Diable. He is the defender of the north, scourge of the south, butcher of the east, and bane of the west, along with six of his best raptor knights. I have three chariots. There are very few problems on the board I can't fix with three chariots. And next to that in the forest is 24 Blades of Nob, led by Ezra the Mad on Glory, her divine altar. And on the left, I have two units of Dark Raiders with crossbows and shields. I have two Reaper Bolt Throwers, although one is barely off the screen on the right. And finally, a Hunting Chariot. Now here's an overall shot of the board. We created the board by doing alternating drops of terrain, and I got to go first, so I put down that large building on the left to give myself some form of board control. I was also lucky enough to put down the two water features, so I used the blue one to make the left side of the table as unappealing as possible, and I was able to put the swamp down in what I thought would be my opponent's deployment zone to try and split up his forces, which it did quite nicely. My opponent tried to mess with me by putting that hill down to create some line of sight shenanigans, but he also offered me that forest, which is the perfect place for me to hide my blades of knob. With 13 deployments, I know I'm going second, and my blades of knob will need that forest to protect them during that first crucial turn of shooting. But having 13 deployments also means I generally control what fights happen and quite often even where they happen because I can corral my opponent's troops. In this case, my chariots, my medusas, and my knights were going to ride over and visit the sea guard. My blades of knob would happily sit close to that objective. Unless the lion guard got too close, then they would charge out. My chaff will outchaff his chaff, and hopefully my shooting can slow down his shooting and maybe some of his flyers. Now I know against the sea guard, they're going to have lethal strike against my chariots, but I think my chariots will do enough damage, there won't be enough sea guard left for that really to matter. Overall, I was pretty happy with the way we deployed, so we moved on to vanguards. My opponent won the roll to vanguard first, so he moved his Elian Reavers into the river. Unfortunately, he's out of sight of my chariot, but that's the perfect place for him to be for cover for one turn of shooting. My Dark Raiders were in perfect position. I decided not to vanguard them, and with that... The Highborn Elves blew their horns, and the turn one began. The Great Eagle moves out from behind the building. The Lion Guard move up slightly, very cautiously, they're not sure what my move is going to be. 
and the sea guard shuffle around slightly just to make sure everyone is in optimum firing distance. On the right side, the Frost Phoenix and the character on an eagle fly behind the cover of that wall, getting ready to move into my back lines and begin causing trouble. In the magic phase, my opponent only got three dice, and he failed at his first attempt at casting, so we moved into the shooting phase. The power of my divine altar protected me from his bolt throwers, and his sea guard only managed to kill two blades of knob. We will miss your beautiful faces. With that, we moved into Dread Elf, turn one. My Dark Raiders on the right charged into his eagle. Unfortunately, one raider drowned on his way in. My Hunting Chariot moved over to shoot at the Elian Reavers, and my Bolt Thrower prepares to shoot at them as well. My other unit of Dark Raiders opted not to take a penalty to their shooting and stay safely hidden inside the water feature. My Blades of Knob moved to the edge of the forest, while my chariots, medusas, and knights all moved onto the hill. The knights are technically on the hill, but the models kept falling over. They would have moved further, however, there's a frost phoenix on the right-hand side, and if they had moved any further forward, he would have been able to see the flank of the chariots and the medusas. That wasn't something I wanted. Having left all my wizards at home, I line up my shooting on the Elian Reavers. The hunting chariot misses. Both bolt throwers shoot and actually kill only one Elian Reaver. It's not enough for a panic check. On the good news, the Dark Raiders at the top of the screen are easily able to kill the Great Eagle and turn to face the incoming Lions. Here's an overall shot of the board after combat. You'll see some red gems by various units. Those are the units that are protected by the Blessing of Glory against uh, my enemy War Machines. But with that, we move into Highborn Elves, turn two. My opponent knew he was going to have to deal with two chaffing blocks of fast cav the entire game, so he tried to divide his forces by his general bravely charging out of his unit to drive away one unit of Dark Raiders. The Dark Raiders, of course, got away, but they also didn't drown and didn't cause any panic on their way out. The Lion Guard then moved up as far as possible. Unfortunately, his Elian Reavers did the smart thing and charged into my Reaper Bolt Thrower. At least one got swept away by the water while he did it. His Frost Phoenix and character on an eagle move into my backfield. That can't be good. Here's a better picture of my enemy's general being brave and going out on his own. Now here's a picture of the center of the board. I wanted to show this as our troops facing off against each other with a large no man's land in the middle. And one of us is going to have to cross that no man's land or else one of us is going to get shot to death by those sea guard. Now I'm the first to say I'm not a big fan of today's magic phases, which is why I don't bring wizards very often. But in this case, my opponent rolled six dice, I got four, he only has two spells, and I'm only afraid of one, enveloping embers. He threw three dice at it and barely got it off. I threw all four of my dice at it and failed miserably. The smell of burned hair filled the air, and 14 blades of knob were instantly scorched to nothing. I was very unhappy. And then, to add insult to injury, he unloads in the shooting phase, and he reduces the blades of knob unit down to the champion and Ezra on our divine altar. And Ezra has taken three wounds from shooting. Suddenly, I don't want this unit anywhere near his lion guard. They are almost dead and they need to conserve points. That champion is the only thing left around here that's scoring and can claim that objective. I now have nothing to stop those Lion Guard from walking up and punching me in the face. This is not good. Time to go big or go home. The Divine Altar uses its power to let me reroll charge distances against anyone who wants to go visit our friends the Sea Guard. All three chariots and all three medusas make it in. Unfortunately, one of the medusas was lost to a stand-in shoot, but the dread knights were able to ride over the hill to the safety of not being seen from the monster and the character behind them. My dark raiders who fled from the enemy general rally, turn around and point their crossbows at the Elian reavers to hopefully shoot them off the board. My Dark Raiders move up to try and slow down that very, very incoming block of Lion Guard now that I've got nothing to slow them down. But this picture also shows something else. You might notice my opponent's general is missing. My Hunting Chariot lined up a shot, hit, 
wounded, my opponent failed his 4 plus ward save, and did 3 wounds. The Lion Guard didn't panic, but hey, I'll call that a win any day. Also in the shooting phase, my Dark Raiders were able to kill one more Elian Reaver and made the last one panic. Highborn Elves very rarely panic, so I take this as a point of pride. He didn't drown on his way out, but I'll still take it. Good job, guys. <laughs> and then there's this. You don't see a picture like this every day, and I've got to say I was pretty excited about rolling this up. We did 10, 20, there are 24. Four models gone. The Medusas put all of their attacks to get rid of his mage. She's dead. Uh, that unit is, is just crushed. It's combat ineffective. There's hardly anything left on it. We didn't manage to put a wound on his BSB. I don't even think we swung on him, but we devastated that unit. That's exactly what MSU is supposed to do. Now we're going to have to grind it out over the next few rounds, which is fine, but I've got a Medusa in his flank. Uh, I've got four units on his front. I cause fear, high toughness. This is perfect. This is exactly what MSU is supposed to do. I couldn't have asked for anything better. And here's an overall shot of the board. It's been a bloody game so far. The Blades of Knob are almost gone. The Sea Guard are almost gone. My opponent's general is gone. His calf or his uh, chaff is dead or fleeing. Uh, things are looking pretty good for me, but I still don't have any kind of an answer for that lion guard block. And if they're able to get over to the right side of the board before I finished off those sea guard, I am in serious trouble. Also, on the right hand corner, you can't see them are his two flyers. They're going to come in and cause some pain. Welcome to Highborn Elves, turn three. My opponent started off his turn with his character on an eagle failing a charge into my bolt thrower, so his frost phoenix moved up behind my lines. His lion guard decided to charge my fast cav, and unfortunately the dark raiders have to hold. We appreciate the sacrifice you're about to make, but I think we know how that battle is going to go. And unfortunately he rallies his alien reaver in the pool. And here's a shot of the board at the end of the movement phase. There's no magic phase, so in the shooting phase, both bolt throwers line up and point themselves at my divine altar. Now, Ezra has the Cloak of Midnight, and I completely forgot during the entire game she had it. So she had a 3-up ward save versus shooting instead of a 4-up. I honestly don't remember if it would have made a difference, but god, I felt stupid. They both shoot, one hits one wounds, fail my armor save, or ward save, and it does another three wounds. The altar falls down. And I've got a very, very vulnerable blade of knob who doesn't want to be there at all. In the combat phase, we go to the sea guard battle, and the Medusas do what the Medusas do. They aren't able to put any wounds on the BSB, but man, do they grind out models. The Highborn Elves are quickly running out of Seaguard sea to soak up those casualties. He is steadfast, I think only for one more turn and then I've got him, but the only reason he's staying is because he's got a BSB in that unit. Dread Elves turn three. The Dark Raiders charge the lone Elian Reaver in the river and he elects to hold. The Dark Raiders make it, but one more Dark Raider dies in the water. That should be the end of that Elian Reaver though. And confident that the Medusas and Chariots can grind out the rest of that unit, my general and his knights turn to face the incoming Phoenix Lion Guard mess. On the left side, my hunting chariot moves up to take a pot shot at the Frost Phoenix, but he misses. And my bolt thrower on the bottom left takes a single shot at the character on an elf getting close to him, and he misses. I think that was his last chance for glory. The Dark Raiders are easily able to kill the last Elian Reaver, and you'll see my Blade of Knob is happily bathing in the cover of water, trying to not get shot by some bolt throwers. The combat up with the Sea Guard doesn't go quite as expected. The Medusas are able to completely wipe out all of the Sea Guard, however, the Highborn BSB lays a can of whoop ass and completely smashes one of my chariots. It's not enough, however, he holds on a two. He fails his reroll and he flees. We randomize which one and he flees through the two chariots and almost into the water feature. He passes both of his dangerous terrain checks and he gets away. 
Not great, but at least I got those points. And at the end of my turn, this is an overall of the board. It's not all bad news. My enemy's BSB is fleeing and his big block of Seaguard is gone. But his commander on an eagle, I think, is about to get to my bolt thrower. That'll be the end of that. His Frost Phoenix, I think, will get into my knights, and that may break them. And I have nothing to stop his Lion Guard. That being said, I think I've knocked quite a few points out of his army, and if his BSB doesn't rally, he's in some serious trouble. So the game could still go either way. And that's exactly what his commander does. He reaches my bolt thrower, and that should be the end of that. And I wasn't sure if this was a mistake at the time, because I thought it was a lot more durable than apparently it is, but he didn't charge my knights. Instead, he flew the Frost Phoenix out of my line of sight and into a good spot where he's looking at the rear of two of my Medusas and the flanks of both of my chariots. The commander on the eagle easily picks up the points for that bolt thrower. And we move into Dread Elves turn four. The Medusa charges his bolt thrower. My hunting chariot on the left moves behind the lion guard to take a shot at that last sea guard bolt thrower it's got two wounds on it so hopefully i can finish that off and with a chariot in its rear hopefully it'll convince the lion guard not to move too far forward in case they want to get some chariots to the front and to the back maybe i shouldn't have been quite so afraid of that frost phoenix as i was but i moved everything else out of the line of sight of that frost phoenix still facing forward i wanted to be able to charge that bsb if he rallied and i left my knights in a position where in the last turn or turns of the game, they should be able to shoot forward and still contest that objective. At least that way, I wouldn't be losing points. Highborn Elves, turn five. After defeating a bolt thrower, a chariot shouldn't be a problem, so his character on an eagle flies up to threaten that. And undeterred to have that hunting chariot in his rear, the lion guard move up to the lake's edge, daring me to charge through it and into him. Now either I have my pictures out of order, or we played this wrong, but the High Elf BSB charged one of my chariots. I did a stand and shoot and I did one wound to him, but again, he just laid some whoop ass and completely crushed my chariot. Uh, he decided to overrun to get out of my line of sight, but I unexpectedly lost a chariot. My Medusa did finally beat down that bolt thrower though. Turn five for the Dread Elves. My general bravely leaves his unit in order to face down a Frost Phoenix while the Medusa and the Chariot get ready in case the Frost Phoenix gets a little frosty. <laughs> the Knights back up a little bit to stay out of the, the arc of the Frost Phoenix. They don't want to get charged by that. And the jig is up. The, the Lion Guard now know there's no way I'm going to charge them. The Hunting Chariot moves out of the line of sight of his pursuer. Instead, he stays nice and close for a good harpoon shot. My Medusa charges my opponent's last bolt thrower. Here's just another shot of that Frost Phoenix in not the best position. And here's an overall of the board. The Medusa easily dispatches the final bolt thrower. In the final two turns of the game, the Lion Guard steps sideways to be within six inches of the center of the table and contest the objective. And with no easy points to steal, the Frost Phoenix moves behind the hill to preserve her points. Prince Diablo and his knights also advance into the center of the board. I took my last few shots, but I wasn't quite able to kill my opponent's BSB. And then the sun set on our battlefield and we counted up the points. After all was said and done, there was a 601 point difference in favor of the Dread Elves, so I walked away with a 12-8 win. If I could have kept the Lion Guard even 2 millimeters further away from the objective, I would have had a 15-5, which is how this list normally performs. But a win is a win, so I can't complain. My opponent, who just moved here from back east and is really fun to play against, made me work for this one. With control of the watering hole in hand, my Dread Elf army will be able to resupply itself, recruit a few new bodies, and be ready to move on to the next fight. Thank you for watching.